In this video, we'll learn how to set up your Mac to program the NU32. The setup for Linux is similar. First thing we'll want to do is go to nu32.org, go to the software section of the page, and then download the items that are listed there. Once we've finished our download, we'll, have, we'll create a folder called NU32 Downloads that looks like this one. We've got a text editor here. We suggest Text Wrangler, but you could decide to use a different text editor. Uh, to get your GCC and Make tools, we suggest that you download the command line tools for our Xcode that's provided by Apple. Uh, you could decide to use Homebrew or Mac ports instead. Uh, you'll also need from Microchip the XC32 compiler, as well as Harmony uh, software framework. Uh, from FTDI, you'll need the USB serial driver, and then for the PIC32, you're going to need the, all the source code from this book, and we're going to be going through the source code in Chapter 1. So this is the stuff that you've downloaded. You should go ahead and install uh, the text editor, the command line tools, the software from Microchip, and the FTDI driver that will allow you to speak USB to UART with your PIC32. After you do that, you should create a directory called PIC32, and here's mine. And in this directory, PIC32, there are five items. The first item is the set of all code, source code, from the book. And if I look at that directory, I'll see by chapters all the software in the book. Uh, there's also a directory called Skeleton, and Skeleton creates or contains files that we'll be using to create future code projects, I'll leave that alone for now, as well as three other files, three .c files, NU32 Utility, Simple Pick, and Talking Pick. So before going any further, we're going to open the terminal and start doing things at the command line. This is something we'll get used to. So on the Mac, under Applications slash Utilities, you'll find a program called Terminal. So let's double click that to open it. And you get something like this. I'm sitting in my home directory that's called Users Kevin. And I've already created the directory PIC32 that we just looked at a moment ago. So I can move to that directory by doing CD for change directory to PIC32. And then if I do LS to list the contents of the directory, I can see the files that I saw earlier. Uh, now I want to uh, take a look at some of the things that we installed. So when we installed the Xcode command line tools, it put things in a directory uh, that I want to list. That directory is library developer command line tools user bin. And I can see all these things that have been installed in that directory. And in particular, I can see here GCC, and I can also see the make tools that I'll be using later. I can also take a look to see where the XC32 cross compiler that Microchip provided uh, is installed. That is, L for me, it's LS Applications Microchip XC32. And I actually have two versions there, an older version called version 1.34. The newer version is version 1.4. So let's go to there, CD version 1.4. Oh. I'm going to go ahead to that directory. And I can see some things there. And in particular, if I went to bin, then I can take a look and see that there's a number of programs there like XC32GCC, which I'll be using later. And finally, I can see where Harmony was installed. And take a look what's there. I see a version 1.06.02, and I could take a look at what's in there, but I won't do that right now. These directory names might be different for you, but you're going to have the directory where all of your compiler and make tools were installed, where the microchip XC32 compiler was installed, and uh, where the microchip Harmony framework was installed. I'm going to go back to my home directory by doing CD. And I'm going to open a file called uh, bash.profile. So let's take a look at it first, more.bash underscore profile. And this is a 
file that gets executed every time I open up a terminal window. And what it's doing is it's setting the look of my prompt and it's adding two directories to my path. Let me open that with Text Wrangler. That's the uh, text editor we suggest. And here we can see the whole file. We can change it now. And in particular, take a look. I added this here to make my prompt look like the directory that I'm currently in. Uh, when we installed XC32, it installed this line in our bash profile uh, file saying that the path, which is the place that our computer is looking to find programs that we invoke, it's going to add to the path this directory beginning applications microchip XC32 version 1.40 bin. So all that's saying is if I ask for the program XC32 GCC, my computer now is not going to know to look in that path to try to find it. I added one other line here. After installing the Xcode command line tools, I added this line that puts the library developer command line tools user bin directory at the beginning of the path. And what this syntax means is that this is going to go on the front of the path. Um, so if you want, you can add this line to your bash profile uh, file to make sure that when you invoke make in the future, it will find it in the right place. So if I go back to my terminal window here and I just ask it what path it's using, I can see the first directory in my path is the library developer command line tools user bin. So anything in there, in particular the make uh, program that was installed there, will be found first before my computer looks for it in any of these other paths.